So the next topic today is behavior management. Okay. okay. Sorry. The definition. No, this is also not there in the notes. So again, keep making stickies as and when I tell you to. Okay. All of you have made stickies of each child psychology theory I have mentioned with the stages. All of you. Okay, so just stick these stickies and look at them once in the morning. Okay, you will be able to remember it. Now the definition of behavior management is: it is the means by which dental health team effectively and efficiently performs dental treatment for a child. It is the means. Now, now can everybody see the slide? It is a means by which dental health team effectively and efficiently performs dental treatment for a child and at the same time instills a positive dental attitude. Okay, so what it means is while you are doing a dental treatment, at the end of that, the child should go out of your clinic with a positive dental attitude. He should not go out crying. Okay, so that is the motive of your good behavior management. So this is a definition you need to know. Okay, you don't need to mug it up, but you need to understand so that if an MCQ is asked on which definition it is, you you can know that it is of behavior management. Next, what are the fundamentals of behavior management? Now, in one of the stickies, just write these. Okay, there is a mnemonic for this if you people want. I learned it this way. What is? Now, what is this? P is positive approach. O is organization. T is team attitude, truthfulness, tolerance, and F is flexibility. Now, what does this all mean? Okay, uh, this is important from MCQ point of view. It may be asked. Positive approach is when a child comes to you, you should have a positive approach to the child. Now is the slide there? Now is it there, Lohita? Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll refresh because everybody is having some of the other problems. I'll just refresh, okay? Okay, now, now is the slide visible? Lohita? Lohita, is it visible now? See, first is positive approach. Okay, positive approach is when a child comes to you, you should have a positive approach to him. You should not be like, oh, he has come now, I have to do the treatment and all. You should not have that kind of an approach. Second is organization. You need to be very organized before the patient comes. Your instruments should be on the table. Everything should be properly organized because a child tends to become restless with time. Okay, team attitude. Not only you. Your receptionist, your assistant, your nurses, whoever is there, everybody should have a good attitude towards the child. Truthfulness. You should be very truthful to the child about what you are doing, what you are going to do, what is being done, everything. Tolerance. You should have a good tolerance level when you are treating children, especially. Okay, you, you should not get onto your nerves very quickly. Flexibility. Sometimes the procedure may go too long or too short. 
so you should be flexible enough with the hour with the time of your dental treatment okay so clear with these six fundamentals of behavior management for f all of you okay next is classification okay so we have the frankel behavior rating scale you people can see the slide okay so the frankel behavior rating scale divides it into four rating definitely negative negative positive and definitely positive definitely negative is the child will completely refuse of all treatment he will cry very forcefully he will flash his arm he will throw all kinds of temper tantrums he will he may even run away from the clinic okay that is he shows extreme negative negativism that is definitely negative next is negative negative is he will be reluctant to accept treatment but he won't flash his arms and his legs and hit everyone and cry loudly and no he will be a little reluctant he will be a little shy he will he may cry also but he won't run away from your clinic okay so he is negative he is not definitely negative he is just negative okay positive is he accept treatment properly he will cautiously follow dentist instructions but he will not smile talk to you and all he will be positive he will be calm and cool but he will still not interact a lot with the dentist okay so he is positive definitely positive is someone who will talk to the dentist ask him questions what is this what is that he will have a good rapport with the dentist okay he will take interest in everything what you do so that is definitely positive so clear with the four terms definitely negative negative positive and definitely positive so in a sticky just write frankel behavior rating scales and the name of these four things definitely negative negative positive and definitely positive that's it you don't need to know anything else next classification it was given by right in 1975 okay so in your next sticky just mention this classification he divided it into positive behavior and negative behavior okay he divided the classification into two major parts so divide your sticky into two half positive behavior and negative behavior now positive behavior subdivided the first subdivision is cooperative child the child here is very relaxed no apprehension okay you can properly manage such a child okay he is a cooperative child next is lacking cooperative ability this comes under positive behavior only now there are many children who are very young okay very small 2 or 3 years or years of age they cannot properly display proper behavior because they are too young so they lack cooperative ability though they, their behavior is positive because of the in their their age 2 to 3 years we cannot accept them to give full cooperation cooperative behavior okay so it is seen in young children with whom communication cannot be established next is potentially cooperative that means children fall under this category okay there are you cannot see the slide or you want to write something you know see these slides have a lot of animations okay i did not remove them all here so it's very difficult going back and coming Okay, you just need to write positive behavior. The first part is cooperative. That's it. Very cooperative children. Okay. Next is lacking cooperative ability. That is, the child is very young to cooperate because the communication cannot be established. Third is potentially cooperative. He wants to cooperate, but he cannot cooperate because he is very scared. He is very fearful. Okay. So this comes under potentially cooperative. So clear that these three cooperative. lacking cooperative ability and potentially cooperative all three come under positive behavior okay clear all of you next is negative behavior first subdivision of negative behavior is uncontrolled or hysterical this is something like definitely negative okay the child will throw temper tantrum physical lashing of legs arm um, the way this picture is appearing the child will be exactly like this okay he will completely refuse to cooperate with you so the, this child is uncontrolled or hysteric okay next is obstinate the next sub 
division I want you to write in your sticky is obstinate. These children are very spoiled or stubborn, okay? They are very stubborn. What they want, they that's a negative behavior. Okay, they'll be very stubborn because whatever they have asked for. Yeah, cute kid. Okay, whatever they have asked for, they have got from your parents. So they have become spoiled children. Okay? Next is timid behavior. Timid behavior is seen in an overprotected child. Okay, he shy, but he he may become cooperative, but at this time he is very shy. Okay? This is usually seen in an overprotected child. Parents who tend to overprotect their children a lot. Okay? That is timid behavior. So the first one was uncooperative. Second is obstinate. Third is timid. Fourth is tense cooperative. That is the children are on the borderline of positive and negative. Okay? He may be cooperating but the next moment he may start crying. Or he may be crying and the next moment he may stop crying and maybe he will open his mouth. So they are just at the borderline of positive and negative behavior. Okay? That is tense cooperative. Next is whining behavior. These people will, what they will do is, they keep complaining. It's paining here, it's paining there, maha ho raha hai, maha ho raha hai. Okay, they all thought, they, because they want to avoid the dental treatment. Once they start talking, you cannot put anything in their mouth, right? So they keep complaining all throughout the treatment. That is whining behavior. Next is toy. Such children are usually physically abused. And you will see them in people who are of low class. They are usually, they are hit so many times, they are beaten so many times. A dental treatment is nothing for them, okay? They will sit quietly in that position and they will accept treatment. They will neither cry, nor laugh, nor talk, nothing. They have become stoic to it. They have become, what you can say, repulsive to it or uh, immune to it. Okay? That is stoic behavior. So what were the five parts of negative behavior or, or right classification, five classification? What were the five subdivisions of uncontrolled? Next one, obstinate, third, timid, good, fourth, whining, no, fourth, okay. Binding, tense cooperative, that is borderline and the last one is stoic. Good. Now next you come to behavior management. Now this behavior ma Okay, keep answering it. <laughs> yeah, tense cooperative, binding, stoic, uncontrolled, obstinate and timid. Okay. Now behavior management can be classified into non-pharmacological and pharmacological. We will not go much into the pharmacological because we have covered a lot in pharma, conscious sedation, general anesthesia, all the drugs. We will be only talking about specific things you need to take charge when you are operating a child. Okay, otherwise we will not go into detail. Non-pharmacological methods can now be divided into three things. I want you to make a new sticky for this. Non-pharmacological management and divide it into communication first. Second is behavior shaping, also known as modification. And third is behavior management. Okay? Now, behavior shaping is divided into desensitization, modeling and contingency management. Okay? Written all of you? Okay. And behavior management is all this. Audio analgesia, biofeedback, voice control, hypnosis, humor, coping, relaxation, implosive therapy and aversive condition. Make a note of all this because this classification is important. Anything can be asked and they can ask you is it a type of behavior shaping or behavior management. Okay? All of you have made a note of this? Okay, done. See, now the first one is communication. Okay. 
Now, communication is again of two types. So, in the sticky, just mention communication as a verbal and non-verbal. That's it. You don't need to know anything of it. So, it's either verbal communication or non-verbal. So, when a child comes to you in the clinic, you should talk to him verbally. But non-verbal communication also helps. When the child comes to you, you can shake his hand and ask, how are you? You can give him a smile. If he uh, gives good cooperative behavior, you can give him a pat on the back or you can give him a hug. So, that is a non-verbal type of communication. Okay? So, you can communicate with the child patient in two ways, verbal and non-verbal. Clear all of you? Okay, next is behavior shaping. The okay, definition is important. It is a procedure with slow... Now, you people remember the definition of behavior management which I gave long back at the starting of the uh, class, right? This is another uh, definition. So, sometimes in an MCQ, a definition may be asked and they may ask you what does it say. So, just be clear between the definition for behavior management and behavior shaping. Behavior shaping is a procedure that slowly develops behavior by reinforcing a successive approximation of the desired behavior until the desired behavior comes into being. Behavior shaping is you are slowly shaping a child to give a desired behavior. You are molding him to give a desired behavior. Whereas behavior management was an overall dental treatment such that the patient goes out of the clinic with a proper positive dental attitude and not tears in his eyes. Clear the difference between behavior shaping and behavior management definition? Okay. Next, behavior shaping. The first thing, what is the first part in behavior shaping? What is the first subclassification of behavior shaping? Desensitization. Okay. So, near desensitization, just write tell, show, do or TSD technique. Okay. TSD comes under desensitization. This was given by Adelstein in 1959. Write the name of the author also. Now, what it is? It is simple. When you are doing a treatment, you tell the child what you are doing. You show him how you will do and then you do it. Okay. For example, if you are doing uh, cavity cutting. You tell him, no smile. Now the slide is there. All of you can see the slide. refresh and work. So, tell, show, do comes under desensitization. What you do here is, if you are doing a cavity preparation, you tell him that you are going to do, you are going to cut a hole and put paste in it. You show him the aerotor, okay? You press the aerotor actually and show him on your hand or on his hand how the water comes. That is, you show him how it works. Do. Then you finally do it. So, he will be able to have confidence that, okay, he is not doing something which is going to hurt me. If you directly open his mouth and start cutting a cavity, he is not going to allow you to do that. So, tell show do is actually one of the best techniques to do on a child when a new child, first visit child comes to you. Okay? Always do that. Even in your clinical practice, not only MCQ point of view, even later on in your life. So, what are the indications of tell show do? First visit, Subsequent visit, when you are introducing a new technique to the child, a very fearful child, a very apprehensive, apprehensive child. These are the indications of a tell, show, do. And it was given by Adelston in 1959. Now you can see Saino. So do you people clear with what is tell, show, do given by Adelston in 1959 and what are the indications? First visit, subsequent visit, fearful child, apprehensive child. Okay? Make a note of tell, show, do near desensitization only and write the name of the author. Next is modeling. 
I talked about modeling and thumb theory. Which theory did we talk about in modeling? No slight skill. Yes, social learning theory. Shanba, you can see the client. Shanba, are you there? Okay. So this was given by Bandura in 1963. And this modeling, which can be introduced in a dental clinic, was given by Bandura in 1969. Okay. I'll refresh once and I go. Shenma, can you see? Okay. Now, Bandura gave modeling in 1969. Okay. And he developed this social learning principle. We have already talked about this principle, uh, about this modeling theory, attention, retention, reproduction, motivation, it is the same thing. Okay? Now what all models can be used? It can be either live models, film models, that is you can show him a movie of a cooperative child, posters, audio visual aids. Okay? These are the four types of things which can you, you can use in modeling an uncooperative behavior of a child. Okay? Here with modeling, Bandura in 1959 and the four types of model. Next is contingency management. Where did we talk about positive and negative reinforcement? Which theory? Any conditioning theory? Yes, operant conditioning theory. Positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, omission and punishment. Remember all of you? Yeah, given by Skinner. Okay? Now this is the same. Okay? Positive reinforcement is you give something to increase the frequency of behavior. This was given by Henry in 1984. And negative behavior is you remove something again to increase the frequency of behavior. For example, withdrawal of the mother. We talked about both the examples, positive and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is given by Henry in 1984 and negative reinforcement is given by Stokes in 1980. So in contingency management, just write positive and negative reinforcement and name of the author. That's it. Otherwise, everything else you have written in the operant condition here. Okay? Next is, what are the types of reinforcement? Other than rewards, what else can you give? Kamal, still you cannot see the sign? Okay. Now the three types of reinforcement are social. Even if you praise, smile, pat, hug, that is a social reinforcement. Material in the form of toys, games, presents, activity involving a child into an activity like watching TV. Okay, that is an activity reinforcement. So the reinforcements are divided into social, material and activity. Clear? Just make a note of these three words, social, material and activity. Clear all of you? Next is behavior management. Okay. Now behavior management, we saw all those types, audio analgesia and biofeedback. I'll just tell you what these terms are. Audio analgesia is also known as white noise. It can be asked as an MCQ. It is what you give a patient earphones, uh, you give him a, to hear music, you can attach it to a dental chair and he starts hearing music. As he starts hearing music, he gets distracted from the dental treatment you are doing. Okay? So you are managing the behavior of a child by giving him some other stimulus of such intensity that the patient finds it difficult to attend to anything else. For example, pleasant music. Okay? Next is biofeedback. Biofeedback is actually instrument like uh, your BP machine, your EEG, your ECG, your pulse. Okay, the gate control mechanism works that way, Kamal. I don't know, the pain mechanism? You are talking about the pain mechanism? 
I don't know how it is related. Okay. Okay, it may be related, I don't know. But here, it is for, just for management of your behavior. Okay. Next is biofeedback, where you are using certain instruments to detect things associated with fear. Like what happens when fear raises? Your BP gets raised, your pulse gets raised, you get anxious, your temperature gets risen. Okay. So these instruments will actually help to tell you that you need to cut down on your anxiety so that your BP, your EEG, your ECG, everything comes to a normal. So this is not something we usually use in our dental clinic. There is this one biofeedback machine available in our country which is there in Nello. Okay? Anyone who is studying in a Nello dental college or if you ever go, just go and have a look at the biofeedback machine. It is for behavior management of kids. That machine helps the child to understand that he needs to reduce his anxiety. Okay? And so he can give a more cooperative behavior. Okay, so that is how a biofeedback machine helps. Next is humor. You talk to the child, you make jokes, you elevate his mood, which will help the child to relax. He will think that this is not a punishment, okay. The dentist is also, he also has a good sense of humor. He can also talk to me properly like my friends do. Next is coping. Now what the child does, inside himself, he develops his own coping mechanism. You may see that certain children who are fearful, you know what they'll do? They will just hold their mother's arm and get the dental treatment done. They're coping with the fear by just holding their mother's arm. That's it. Or they will hold the dental chair or they may even hold your arm. Or they'll do something which reduces their stress. Okay? So that is they cope with the dental fear. Next is relaxation. That is you give a list of exercises, relaxation exercises to the patient and then he, the anxiety gradually reduces. Hypnosis is something where you alter the state of consciousness of a mind. You put him into a hypnotic state. You must have seen in that TV how the uh, patient goes into hypnosis. And then you do the dental treatment. But this is something also we don't do in the normal dental course. Okay, It is not actually considered safe. Next is aversive conditioning. Here you are actually using strong things to put down the uncooperative behavior of the child. In aversive conditioning, just mention there are two types, home and physical restraint. Okay, now what is home? Everybody knows what is home. What is the full form of home? Yes, hand over mouth exercise. What you do here is, when a child is very uncooperative, you put your hand on the mouth, okay, such that he cannot make noise. You closely come to his ear and you tell him that he needs to cooperate with the dentist or else he will not leave his mouth. And instantly the child will become silent. But you cannot, you should not use it on every child, okay, just because you are angry on the child. You have to use it very specifically only for certain children to display a lot of temper tantrums. Okay? Now, when should you use it? You should use it in a healthy child. Okay? You should not use it in a medically compromised child. The child should be 3 to 6 years old. He should not be less than 6 years. He should be able to understand what you are saying. And the child should display uncontrollable behavior. That is why you need to do it. Contraindication is under 3 years. You should not do it. Handicapped, immature, frightened child, you should not do such things. Physically, mentally handicapped children, you should not do. Okay? So clear, when should you use hand over mouth exercise? Now there are several variations of home. Hand over mouth with airway unrestricted. Here you are just doing hand over mouth. You are not restricting the airway. Next is hand over mouth and nose and airway are restricted. That is known as home art. Okay? Hand over mouth and airway restricted. But that is also not, uh, not uh, considered to be safe. And even if you are doing it, it should be only for 30 seconds, more than, not more than that. And you need to take a parental concern before doing it. If something happens to the child, 
what the whose responsibility it is. So it is better to use a hand over mouth rather than hand over mouth airway restricted. Next is dry towel held over nose and mouth, wet towel held over nose and mouth, just a normal towel held over nose and mouth. These are all variations of home. Okay. So where you've written home on your aversive conditioning, just make uh, five variations: dry towel, wet towel, humar, normal towel. Okay. Next is physical restraints. Now physical restraints are of two types: active and passive. Active is restraining by the dentist or by the mother or by the parent. She will hold the uh, child in her uh, lap and she will hold his legs and hands. That is active restraint. Passive is you use a restraining device like papoose board or pedi wrap, yes, velcro strap. Okay, that is passive. So make a note of just active and passive where you have written physical restraints. Now what are the different types of restraints which can be used? For the body, it is pedi wrap. This is a papoose board which you can see. Okay, in the figure. Pedi wrap, papoose board, bean bag with strap, towel and tape. For extremities, only for your hands and legs, you can use velcro strap, posi strap. Now can you see the slide? For the head, it is the head positioner and the forearm body support. Okay, so this is the classification of restraint. There are different restraints available for different parts of the body. Okay, next is for the mouth. Mouth is the mouth block, your tongue blade and your mouth prop. So any of this can be asked and they can ask you whether it's a passive restraint or whether it's a uh, active restraint. Okay. You want me to name the, repeat the names of the restraints, Saurabh? For body, it's the teddy wrap, the papoose board, the bean bag with strap, towel and tape. This is the papoose board. There is just one pick here, Saurabh. This is the papoose board. For extremities, it's the velcro straps, all the straps, posi straps. For head, it's the head positioner and the forearm body support. Okay? And for the mouth, it's the mouth block. These are all the mouth blocks which you can see. This is the bladed tongue blades. Okay. These are the tongue blades which are kept in the mouth. Teddy wrap is like a sheet sort of. It's not, I don't have a diagram for it. It's like a sheet. It will wrap you. Shema, you want to see or you want to copy it down? Okay, these are what the restraints I'm talking about are passive restraints or active restraints. Shanba, you still can't see it? Yes, they are passive restraints. Yeah, it's restraints now. It's on mouth. You can see it? Yes, they are on blocks. Next we come to pharmacological management. You have already gone through conscious sedation, general anesthesia. We are not going to talk about all that, the drugs and all. We are only going to talk about what things you should keep in mind when you are treating a dental patient, uh, when a child patient. And secondly, drug dosages. We will be talking about drug dosages in the last miscellaneous lecture where we will be talking about how to calculate drug dosages all those young rules, clock rules and there we will be talking about the doses of all the pharmacological drugs. Just for now, you need to know that when you are doing a conscious sedation or a general anesthesia, you keep monitoring heartbeat, blood pressure, respiratory rate, right? Am I right? You need to monitor and keep a check on all the vital signs of a patient. So for a child, all these vital signs are different from an adult, okay? So you need to keep in mind the heart rate, BP and respiratory rate of a child at different ages. So on one sticky, just write down the vital signs of a child between 1 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 12, divided into heart rate, BP and respiratory rate and note down all the values. Okay? 
So all these stickies that you have made today of psychological theories and behavior management classifications, just put them on your wall tonight and tomorrow morning look look at it for at least three four days only in the morning and you'll be able to remember all the psychological theories and classifications. Okay. You don't need to mug up or by heart what each theory states. You just need to know the basic points, and every theory is actually in the word itself. Okay, done with the stage uh, with the chart. Okay, should I change the slide? Okay, quickly match this behavior shaping. Is there any okay? D good. Modeling was given by Bandura, nineteen sixty nine. Contingency management. Any example of contingency management is given? Yes. Very good. Mother withdrawal from clinic. This is what? Is it positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement? Excellent. It's negative reinforcement. Audio analgesia is also known as white noise. Good. Tell show do was given by good. Adult study nineteen fifty nine. Mention one fundamental of behavior management. Any one behavior management fundamental is given here. Organization. Somebody said Papus board. Papus board is not a fundamental of behavior management. Tell me the other fundamentals of behavior management, or give me the mnemonic of it. Part three F. Yes. Positive approach, organization, truthfulness, team attitude, tolerance, and flexibility. Okay. Passive behavior. Example of passive restraint. A. Papus book. Good. So you people clear with all the classifications and all the theories. So you are the end with child psychology and behavior management. Just go through the stickies for three to four days. And if you want, you can have a look at the lecture just for understanding the concept. Okay. And you will be through with. Okay, all of you. Okay, so the next class is on Wednesday again at six thirty. So I want all of you to be there at six thirty. Okay, nobody should be late. Otherwise, then you miss the class, and then there's a problem. Okay. So good night, everyone. Bye. Desensitization. Okay. Shanbhav, desensitization is tell, show, do technique. You want to know desensitization? What do you want to know? Modeling or desensitization? Modeling. Social learning theory or modeling in behavior. You got it. You are clear now. Okay. Okay. So should I shut off the lecture? Okay. Bye, all of you. Yes, Swati. Tell. Negative reinforcement. Yeah, there is a general path class tomorrow. Again. At seven, but there is a pedo class on Wednesday now at six thirty. Okay, so I think negative reinforcement is withdrawal of. See, the child is cooperating well, and you want to increase this cooperative behavior, so you are negatively reinforcing by removing his mother from the clinic. Okay, there is omission is the child is displaying temper tantrum. And you take away his favorite toy, and you tell him that I won't give you this toy until and unless you give cooperative behavior. 
so omission decreases the likelihood of response it decreases the yeah mother is withdrawal of mother is just an uh, example no withdrawal of mother will come under negative reinforcement only see when a child comes to you in a dental clinic he is usually very cooperative when he is with his mother okay but he he may not be able to cooperate fully or pay his attention completely to you he may tend to pay attention even towards his mother so what you do if you remove the mother from the clinic his entire attention will be towards you so you will get a full cooperation though he is cooperative he is not completely cooperative because he is even talking to his mother at that time so if you remove the mother only he will only talk to you you will get a full cooperation from all end so you are increasing the likelihood of a good behavior he is becoming conscious about he is becoming conscious about even say he wants to he is giving good behavior there is no problem but he is not giving a complete good behavior you want to increase his good behavior but omission yeah he is not conscious you may realize that when a child patient comes the mother keeps talking to the child though you are also talking to the child the mother will also keep talking you tell him to open the mouth the mother will also tell so the child is not able to concentrate where he should uh, actually talk so it's better to remove the parents from the clinic okay then you can get the entire cooperation of the child getting me now an omission is different he is displaying temper tantrum so, so you are actually taking away his toy okay so clear all of you shenma and swati both of you are clear now the difference between negative reinforcement and omission yeah it is withdrawal of a stimulus which is actually coming in the way of your uh, good behavior there is good behavior but you can get better behavior if you remove that stimulus or that aversive stimulus that is a mother okay so clear now no more doubts okay bye guys good night